Last but not least, we're going to take a look at the Wub Machine inside of Soundation. And the Wub Machine is the perfect example of an instrument that has a pretty detailed and interesting looking interface, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a better instrument than anything else. So if we compare the Wub Machine to the Simple, yeah, there's a big difference in aesthetic and overall look and overall feel. And I can only assume that there's gonna be a difference in sound as well. And by looking at this, there's some blood stains over here. There's a knob labeled filth. We see that MSL again, which we saw with the SPC, which also added distortion. There's a drive control here on the filter. The filter actually says analog to it. All of those things are leading me to believe that this is going to be a very dirty, a very rich, a very big sounding synthesizer. However, if I was to make a track, even if it was a very aggressive track, I don't think I would want to use this particular instrument for every single part because it would be too overpowering. I'd have to combine some instances of the simple, maybe a couple of samplers in order to make the whole thing sound cohesive. All right, so just because something might have a bigger or richer sound doesn't mean that's what you're gonna wanna go to for every single sound. And instead of just talking about it, let's listen to this thing right now. Let's hear the default sound. All right, right off the bat, I'm noticing that we're hearing something that seems to be controlling this filter, but it's looping the movement. So it's as if the cutoff is going up and down, up and down, up and down in a cycle. There's no envelope in here, and I don't know any envelope that's capable of doing that unless that envelope can loop, and we haven't seen any looping envelopes inside of Soundation. So my guess would be that this is the LFO that's controlling the filter. So why don't I change the speed and we can see if we can confirm that. And then my guess is that depth is much like intensity, and that's controlling how far this is gonna move up and down. So if I pull this all the way to zero, we should just get a sustaining note. And that's what we're getting here. Again, there's no envelope to be found, and now I can just mess with the filter cutoff and open this right up. All right, great, and we have a few different options. Be aware that when you're experimenting with these, things like the peak and the notch, they will require a certain amount of resonance and drive for you to be able to hear them. And there are more subtle effects. So peak is as if there's just a small little band that's been spiked in the frequency spectrum. So if I go to peak, increase the drive, increase the resonance. You can hear that there's a little like notch that's going up in the frequency spectrum that's being accentuated as we move up and down. The notch is exactly the opposite. It's a tiny little cut in the frequency spectrum. But they're gonna sound pretty similar. Again, you need drive, you need resonance to be able to hear those. If you don't have those turned on, you probably won't hear a whole lot of an effect. We also have a band pass, which is just a low pass and a high pass working together. So if we're in the middle, and let me go to sub here and just turn that off. It's currently bypassing the filter. You can tell that we don't have a lot of low end, we don't have a lot of high end, and then we can compare that to the low pass where all that low end is coming back in, or the high pass, where we're able to hear the buzzing on top. And the other fact about the bandpass filter is that as you increase the resonance, you're actually not gonna be getting more frequency content, you're gonna be getting less because it's, it's uh, actually peaking out both those low pass and high pass filters and so it's only narrowing in on a very small range of frequencies. So if you wonder, I'm turning the resonance up, why is the sound getting even thinner and thinner? That's the reason for that. And I can pull back on this and we'll hear more frequencies to the left and right. So for this, why don't I go ahead and just use bandpass. Let's use something different. I'll pull the filter uh, down a little bit, increase that drive. And now let's look at our oscillator sections. I've gone ahead and turned off the sub for now. We'll get to that in a second. And you can see we have two oscillators together. We can change the pitch of these. And so we have this one that's down 12, this one that's at zero. If I wanna put them on the same pitch, I could do that. 
but actually I think I like the way it sounds at minus 12. Our gain control is just how loud the oscillator is going to be. And then here we actually see that we have a pan control. So I could put one oscillator slightly to the left, even though it's saying right, and one slightly off to the right. So we get that really cool effect. And then we also can change the shape. So right now we're on a square, but if I start to move this around, You can hear that we're actually messing with the pulse width there. And you can do that with all these different types here. There's like uh, kind of a sawtoothy wave and then a more aggressive sawtooth and then the square. I kind of like having it on both squares and maybe I'll just change the shapes a little bit. And now instead of a detune option, what we have here is this little button called Reese. And if you Google Reese bass, you'll be able to find out more about that. But the sound of this is what's important. So if I click this, you can hear that it sounds like we're actually doubling the oscillators and slightly detuning them. There's another form of detune inside of this instrument that we'll look at towards the end, but... but that's the effect there. And then we have a third oscillator that's a sub oscillator. And again, we can choose between a sine wave here at the bottom and more of a triangle approaching saw wave at the top. And then we have the option to bypass the filter, which is usually pretty smart because if the filter is moving a lot with the LFO, you're gonna lose a lot of that low end energy. So right now we are bypassing the filter. So we'll be able to hear this sub. My bad, I didn't have bypass enabled. You could hear the big difference that that caused there. And so this is playing an octave below whatever I'm hitting. So uh, right now, let's say I'm playing C3. That sub is playing at a C2. And also oscillator one is playing at a C2. So it might be smarter is to pull this up to zero. pull that up to 12 so we can really hear that. So let me just pull these gains down a little. Yeah, I'm not liking the sound of the Reese right now. And then we have these independent glide controls and that will work exactly the same way as it worked with the mono because this instrument is also monophonic. I can't play chords no matter how hard I try. So if I want to make this interesting, I could have one of the oscillators glide. Put that all the way up. Something to consider, but also something to be pretty careful with. All right, now let's look at the LFO section finally. The LFO, it's pretty straightforward. It stands for low frequency oscillator. And you just choose how this cutoff is going to behave. All right, so with the sign, it's gonna be a nice and smooth repeating cycle like this. And we'll just listen to the differences here and it should be straightforward to you. We just have to increase the depth. So these are better heard than actually explained. You can definitely tell what's happening with something like the square. It's just jumping between the two with these two ramps. The uh, cutoff is either ramping down or ramping back up. And then we have the triangle, which is just a little bit more aggressive, not quite as smooth as the sign. So maybe I'll choose one of these ramps. Okay, I like the way that sounds, all is good. We have retrigger and loop. If loop is turned off, it's gonna actually act more like an envelope and only do this motion once and then sustain. So if I put the speedway down. 
So that's the one way to make this instrument have a bit more of an envelope. But with loop on, it's going to act more like a traditional LFO, which just runs indefinitely. And then this retrigger just means that every time I hit the note, it's going to start at the same place. So in this case, it's starting at the end and then ramping up versus starting at the top and then coming down. So if that's off, you'll hear the difference. Every time I'm hitting a note, we're actually at a different phase in the cycle there. And that's what phase controls. It controls where this starts. With these two ramps, you're probably gonna want it at zero, but you can listen to the difference here if I move it around. And then last but not least, key tracking is just going to mean as we play lower on the keyboard, the speed will be slower. As we play higher on the keyboard, the speed will be faster. So let's engage the sub. In fact, I'm going to change this to a low pass. And if we want, we can actually have the volume um, of the sub be controlled by the LFO as well. So we'll bypass the filter, but we'll have the volume move with the LFO. So it's going to go up and down. If we slow it down, we'll really be able to hear this. So there we go. And the last section is just the kind of specialty section in this instrument. We have that MSL, which is going to give us the same type of limiting heavy distortion that we got with the SPC. We have a filth, which is just like a sample rate reduction that we see in the degrader. And then we have another option for unison detuning. Okay, so we have to turn it on with the active down here, and then we'll be able to set the number of voices. So how many duplicates of this uh, sound are we gonna have? And then how much do we wanna detune those? So let's take a quick listen to this. You'll notice as we increase the count, the volume will actually go down. And that's because we're having a lot of phase problems occurring. And because of that, the volume is actually decreasing. But once we increase the detune amount, you'll start to hear everything widen out and get a bit bigger again. There's a lot you can do with this instrument. You just have to experiment. It sounds a lot dirtier than the simple, but just remember because the interface looks different doesn't mean the instrument is any better or worse than anything else you have access to inside of Soundation. Have some fun.